Abby here with Scrap and Yabby and welcome back for another Craftmas 2016 project for all of you ladies. So before I get into this project, please ignore all the stuff around. Um, I'm in the middle of making several different projects for this Craftmas thing and so I kind of can't really clean my desk off like I normally do because I need everything out still. So please just ignore all the clutter. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed the um, photos at the very first of this video so you can kind of see everything up close. So what work I'm going to be making um, on camera with all of you as a tutorial is this really cute frosty mason jar lantern. And I think this turned out really super cute. And I forgot to put the little light back inside. Let me do that real quick as I'm chatting with you. So this is going to be a project that's going to take me um, overnight because I need to let this stuff dry. And I probably wouldn't have to wait overnight, but um, I have other pro projects I can be working on. So I'm going to set this off to the side, the one we're going to work on together. But I want to at least get this part done tonight. And then tomorrow when we have actual daylight and better lighting than Abby's evening craft room light. Then we'll go ahead and work on the rest of this together. So just want to share with you what this looks like up close. Um, lots of layers of different burlaps and laces and trims and metals. And I have um, you know some flowers from Michael's with some of the glittery leaves. These are some um, of the stamens from another. They're not, they didn't come with this. I popped out the actual stamen that came with this and I don't think I kept it. Um, I didn't like them, but I'll show it to you when I show the whole strand. And then I have some of these little wooden snowflakes that I use some of the um, Gilder's Paste Wax on and I've got some little bits of um, some trims right here, a little satin trim with gold edging and then I have a little strand of some pretty little iridescent bling right there. And then on the inside you're going to see the little tea light candle which flipped on its side because I turned this over. <laughs> so, but um, I'll have pic you'll have seen pictures in the first part of the video with the lights on so you can see it better. But I think this turned out really super cute and I love it. I think it's so so cute. And this is just simply a mason jar with um, some different layers of textures and different trims and whatnot and you can make this custom little you know, frosted mason jar lantern for your home for the holiday season. And I'm going to be sharing with you really quickly the items that we're going to be using for this. Um, this is just a mason jar which you can pick up anywhere, Walmart. Um, the ones at Dollar Tree don't look like this. They look, um, they don't have the writing on them, at least the ones at my Dollar Tree. Let me show you what they look like. I have these for a different project, but um, the ones at the Dollar Tree look just like this if you want to go there and grab some of those. You can use whatever type of jar you like. I mean, it doesn't have to be a mason jar per se. Um, that's just kind of the look I like. And then I've already went ahead um, just to kind of save time. I just took some wire that I got from the floor, uh, jewelry and beaded section at Walmart. I don't know what the gauge is because I took it out of the packaging, but I just got this from Walmart where the beads and stuff are. And I just made it off the length that I wanted for the handle piece and then I made sure I had about, uh, about an inch and a half on each side so I could hot glue that there just, just so I had a really good base to adhere to the side of the jar. Now um, you can use E6000 if you want to. I know I've seen other people where they use tape. Um, that to me doesn't seem as secure. You can use what you like though. You can use your bacon 3-in-1 if you want. I just thought hot glue would work the best. Plus we're going to be adding all of these different trims around the edging here so it's really going to um, hold in that wire. It's going to like squeeze it in and kind of hold it in really well. So um, the base of the project is the mason jar and then this here, but don't throw away your rim, your lids and the little rims. You can use those for a different project, which I will be sharing with you. So it comes with the lid like this. That's how I, I got those at Michael's. So let's show you those really quickly. I have a few different trims. Um, the trim I'm using right now, and I'm just about out of it, is the Mona Me Gabby trim here which is really pretty and that's what's on this particular one as well as this trim right here everything is so buried on my desk you guys this is also from my me gabby and this is all i have left oh i only have a little bit left but i have other trims i can use that will work with that so if you don't have anything from Monami Gabby and you like this look, you can also um, get this from Michaels. They just had a huge sale on all their different ribbons and trims. They were 80% off, but this would work. It's, it's basically the same kind of a look, so you could do that as well. Um, I have this box of these stamens that I purchased from Michaels. That's what I use for my flower center. These are some little wooden um, snowflakes from Michaels as well. And let's see what else here. Uh, for Dollar Tree, I got these um, little 
120 hour tea lights you get two per package and all you have to do is pull the paper out the bottom and it, and it works so they come with a working battery inside and here's some just lace trim that I used as well along the top part there and then here's some of the Gilders paste wax and antique gold and I'll tell you, show you what that looks like you, of course, can use whatever color you want. If you don't want to be using the gold colors, you can, you know, obviously change that up. And then um, for the glitteriness on the jar, or the mason jar, I'm using some of this dry glitter, um, clear rock candy stickle stuff from Mike, um, Michaels, from Tim Holtz. And then I have just some Mod Podge that I'm using as the adhesive. And for the fl the leaf and the flower, these are just some um, garlands that I picked up. Oops, sorry. Told you, so much stuff on my desk. I just picked these up from Michaels from the garland section in the um, holiday area where they, they just had a huge, huge sale. And then for the beaded trim, this is some stuff I purchased off Amazon. So I have this massive roll of this. So I have quite a bit of that. And I just thought that added just a really nice kind of um, almost icy kind of a look to it because they are iridescent and this is very snowy um, kind of looking and this is not really coming off on my hands I mean I was worried about that but it's it's really not I mean it's just maybe a few loose pieces um, when I touch it but this is how it looks so I'm gonna get my desk cl cleared off as much as I possibly can so we can come back and I can at least get the base layer on with all of you this evening for this part of the video and then tomorrow when I have better lighting, we'll go ahead and assemble the rest of it, um, the, of the mason jar there. So give me just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, ladies, I'm back and I'm all set up and ready to go. I did forget to share these two spools of trims that I used as well on the project. And now we're going to get started. So what I did for the first one is I poured my Mod Podge out on a piece of just scrap paper. But I think it's just as easy to kind of pour it on here. And you want to make sure that you're only working in small sections. Um, that way, otherwise, the Mod Podge kind of dries. And I learned that the first time I did it. You're always learning all the time. I thought I could get it all up quick faster. But then I have a ceiling fan in my craft room. So just like the purple feather boa from my first Craftmas uh, project, I forgot to turn my fan off. And so I had this stuff blown all over the place. <laughs> It's like my room is a purple feather glittery mess right now. But anyway, at least it's purple, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of show you how I'm going to do the first part. And then I'm going to make this the rest of the jar um, as a process video. Because I'm going to just be repeating myself as to what I'm going to share with you right now. So I'm just going to use, I'm um, just pour it directly on the jar. And i got to move some stuff out of the way. But if you're not comfortable doing that, of course, you can, you know, pour it on a piece of paper. Or, you know, a piece of scratch paper or something. And you can... Um, do it that way. Just whatever, whatever makes you more comfortable. And what I'm using is just one of these cheapo foam brushes because I don't have to worry about, you know, it getting Mod Podge stuck in the fibers or anything like that. And you just want to kind of put some on. Now, I'm not going above the where the rim is, where the, the glass threads are, because I'm going to be wrapping that with those different trims I shared with you. So there's no reason for me to do that. And I'm not going over the, all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going down here like this. But you can do the bottom if you want. My only concern is that it wouldn't, it won't sit um, as steady or as, you know, level if you have the glittery bumpies on there. So I'm just going to put my, um, oops, i got to move some more stuff out of the way. Just going to um, hold this over top and I have a piece of scratch paper here just to kind of catch any little bits of glitter if I can anyway. And I'm just going to simply put this over the top and I'm just going to sprinkle this on. Just almost like you do when you have cinnamon sugar toast. Really, really super easy to do. So, And I kind of almost find this therapeutic in a way. So what I'm going to be doing is once I get all the jar, the whole jar done all the way with one layer like this, I'm going to come back through and I'm going to... Um, do a little bit of pouncing of a technique with the Mod Podge on the sponge brush. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Just want to make sure I got all that wet glue done. So you, you can see on here, if you look, you can see how there's like little raised area or more concentrated areas of glitter. I wanted that on purpose because I kind of wanted this to look like snow drifts. You know, it's not just one flat layer. You've got little mounds of snow, things like that. So that's kind of the look I'm going for for this. And how I do that is I just get some more Mod Podge. And um, I, I do pour some out because you're going to get glitter on your brush. So you're going to want to use a brush you're going to throw away. These are pretty indispensable, I think. So use something like that. But if you dip your brush back in the bottle, you're going to get the stickle glitter stuff in your Mod Podge. So make sure you're pouring it into a container first. And I'm just going to get some more Mod Podge on the brush. And then I'm just going to kind of pounce, 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 pounce and kind of build it up a little bit. And then I just sprinkle this back over. So I'm really creating a layer or a little hill, so to speak, of the Mod Podge and the glitter already on the mason jar. But by doing that pounce, 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 I'm going to be adding those kind of layers 
that you saw here with hopefully you can see like where it's more concentrated. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on process and finish the rest of this jar and um, I'll be back. Oh, and another thing too real quick is I'm another reason why I'm not putting the glitter up here is so I have a place to hold the jar. Um, and if you, you do want to put your wire on first. I think I mentioned that in the first part. But this way I have a place to hold the jar and then kind of be able to turn it like this as I'm working on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up and then I'll be back to do the process part. See you in just a little bit. Okay, ladies, so this is the how the jar looks once you get all your different layers of the um, glitter on there. Now, you can use whatever kind of um, glitter you have available. You don't have to use the Clear Rock Candy from Tim Holtz. That's just what I have that's in bulk like that. Um, you can use whatever color you want. You could make it like a light blue, or you could do pinks. I mean, anything you wanted to. This would be gorgeous as lilac or lavender, but... I'm sticking with the gold and kind of brown colors for this one right now for this particular project. And I like all the buildup of layers. You don't have to do that, of course. You can keep it all nice and smooth if that's what you prefer. And another thing to note, too, the Kerr and Ball Canning Jars always have that, you know, their word on there, kind of like um, embossed on there. This is going to be covered with um, your decoration on the front. So if you can't find the Kerr or the, or the Ball Canning Jars, don't worry about that because it's going to be covered. But if you do want that to show through... Um, which you could do with this one layer. It looks really cool actually. Then you'd want to put the um, decoration on the opposite side of the jar. Now I did want to denote really quickly that when I was moving this around, putting all the different stickles on, or excuse me, the glitter, and one of the edges of this popped up, I just put some hot glue back on it and it's down there just fine and it's holding just fine, not a problem. And you're also, like I said in the first part of the video, you're going to be adding all those different layers of trims and metal and stuff to this, and all it's going to do is just compact on that a little bit tighter. So I don't have any worry about this falling um, if, you know, like you hang it off of a doorknob or, you know, you have um, like a hall tree or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight. Um, you probably could take a heat tool to it, but I don't need to do that because I've got plenty of other projects to be working on. So I'll see you guys in the morning, and we'll finish up this project but for you, it'll be just a few minutes. So I'll see you in just a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sorting through the two different um, garlands that I shared with you earlier and picking out the gold leaves and the white flower that I want to use on the project. And I'm just kind of measuring out that burlap trim from Mona Me Gabby with the lace on top. Very, very pretty stuff. If you aren't able to find this, you can get this from Michaels. Um, they do have it, but it looks a little bit different, the lace. 
but I would suggest to go to Monami Gabby, or I recommend because they have a lot of beautiful, beautiful trims. And here I'm just kind of showing you the um, gold cordings and different ribbons I'm going to be using that I'm putting on top of the mason jar just to kind of hide the um, top rim just a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more complete. And then once I get this on, I'm going to be using some of that um, lace that I picked up from, it's like a crochet lace. I'll be putting that on the inside rim and that kind of hides some of the, um, the glue from the inside when you're looking out and it's kind of pressing that down and what I did to make sure that it wasn't going to fray anymore is I just put a little bit of glue on the end when I cut that gold cording and just kind of poked it down with that um, Betty Crocker tool that you saw me using. Now I'm gluing that lace uh, crocheted lace trim on the inside that I mentioned just kind of completes the inside I think so when people pick it up and look at it they're not seeing the glue from the outside they're going to see the pretty crocheted trim. Of course, all of this is optional. You can do what you'd like. And now I'm adding some more of that jewelry wire that I got from Walmart. You can see it's very pliable, bends very easily. And I'm just kind of doing a crisscross pattern, just taking my um, little wire snips and just gonna kind of twist that in the front. And um, I'm twisting the pieces I cut and they'll be covered with all the different flower um, and leaves and different um, embellishments that I'm putting on the front of the project. So you don't need to worry about covering those up because that'll be covered. Now I'm just kind of setting up my station. I have my scissors on either side of the jar just to prevent it from rolling around and I have the tip of it elevated on that spool of ribbon so you can see what I'm doing. And basically I'm just creating my layers. Just exactly what to do on a card, for a layout, um, for an altered piece for your home decor. And now I'm taking out just a smaller section of those, um, of the, um, oh my goodness, I just totally had a brain, a brain lapse here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, the little um, stamens. There we go, Abby, good job. <laughs> the stamens on the inside of that flower and I'm just creating some little, um, you know, little bits of emblems with that Mona Make Abby trim just to kind of add a little bit of texture to the project and kind of another layer of that beige kind of cream color. And I'm just using hot glue just to kind of, and this is exactly the same process I do use. Um, when I'm making cards and layouts and things like that. I just kind of build my layers from the base up. Just in case you're intimidated on doing items like this on a project like that. So you're going to see a faux pas here coming up. Now this was a mixed pack of wooden snowflakes I got from Michaels and um, I didn't realize that the snowflakes I used on the first set, um, the first jar, had holes on the ends of each of the, of the snowflake tips and that's how I tied it on. So you're going to see me kind of go, what? Because <laughs> I tr tried to put the piece of burlap th through and I realized, wait a second, there are no holes on these. So that was kind of a goof up on my side, which I do all the time. We all do. Nobody's perfect, of course. And um, I'm just going to put those two to the side and use them for a different project. So here, here you're watching me put the Gilder's Paste Wax on the front and the back of the wooden snowflake. This stuff is amazing. I would really urge you ladies to purchase this if you can. I purchased mine from Amazon. It's around the $10 to $11 price point. So, um, and it does last for a super long time. I've been using that stuff like crazy and it looks like I haven't even taken any out, or hardly any out of the container. And it does dry fairly quickly. You can take your heat tool. You just may want to make sure you don't have it too super close so the wax doesn't start heating up and kind of melting off. And here's when I um, was looking for my piece of burlap, I think, because I was taking off one of the fibers. That's what I was going to use as the string to um, tie the wooden snowflakes to the mason jar. So I'm sorry for this kind of dead space right here. And then, then I'm realizing, like, wait a second, <laughs> there are no holes on these. And I'm like, oh, Abby, you goof. So, oh, actually, I'm, let me take that back. What I'm doing here, you can't see I'm off camera. I'm so sorry, I didn't realize I was off, is I'm just taking a little um, pokey tool I have, and I'm getting out some of the Gilder's Paste Wax that collected in, in the inner parts of the snowflake where the cut aparts are. And again, I apologize, I didn't realize I was off camera just kind of in the zone listening to some crafty YouTube videos in the background and working and sometimes I forget that Abby you're filming you need to be in frame so I do apologize for that but that's all I'm doing and you can see the little pieces kind of flying out of the back of the snowflake onto that piece of paper 
and you're going to notice that happening when you use the gilder's paste wax on the more intricate items like this now you don't have to probably ha have such a heavy hand as i did because i was trying to do this pretty quickly um you could put a little bit less on your finger and go a little bit slower i suppose but um yeah i'm kind of a crazy crafter so <laughs> just trying to get it done so it's, so it's after this when i get this part done that's when i realize oops I didn't uh, grab the right ones with the holes on the end so now I'm gonna just be kind of wiping up my area a little bit and I'm grabbing a piece of the burlap once I get my area wiped down and dried and I'm taking off a of fiber I'm going to be taking off a piece of a fiber and that's what I'm going to use as my string so to speak to tie these on to the um, the Christmas tree and you see a Pringles jar right there what was I doing oh my goodness I was eating some Pringles before I started filming and I didn't realize it got right in the camera I am such a dork I swear I love the salt and vinegar Pringles I love salt and vinegar chips I love them but the Pringles are something I can eat a little bit easier with my facial pain so just to explain that <laughs> so a little embarrassing ignore that so what I'm doing here is showing you that uh, um, that I now I'm realizing wait a second this isn't the right snowflakes I'm like these aren't tying on here right what am I doing and then it takes me a second to realize it unless I already change them nope I apologize I guess I didn't film that clip I had a clip where I was showing you the wrong ones and then I grabbed the right ones and put the wax back on top so I apologize getting ahead of myself now I'm just adding the layers of the different trims from Michaels and I needed to stand that back up right so I could kind of get the dangling you know in the layering the, where I want it to be and I'm, I'm just using little bits of hot glue to kind of do that because I wanted one to move, I want them to kind of be offset a little bit on the front of the jar and then I end up moving that bottom snowflake up just a little bit because it's hanging down it's a little bit too far and but that just you know that just kind of comes with the with the whole process of creating like this so you just kind of play around and see what you like and what you don't like and I'm just tucking in those acrylic um, little gems from Walmart and some of that trim from one of me Gabby just kind of futzing around with it and getting everything arranged like I want it to be and that kind of hides the back of the flower that I glued on too so that's another reason why I did that and now I'm just kind of adding some little bits of burlap uh, fibers in there and some more little bit um, that, oh well, that's what I'm at grabbing there I apologize that is a um, kind of a little glittery pine cone spray I bought from um, Michaels it was really cheap and I thought that looked really cute to have that on the front there and um, just adding those little bits from Mona Me Gabby which I did not do on the first one but I as I was making this one I decided I wanted to add those because I liked how they looked so that's something that you didn't see on the first one but I did add them um, as well okay ladies here are the completed glittery little lanterns that I made from the mason jars and I thought these turned out really super cute so I'm filming in my hallway entry table I don't have all of my Christmas stuff set up yet so I just kind of threw together a little backdrop so <laughs> I apologize if it looked a bit a little bit uh, thrown together because it really was so um, I'm just zooming just a little bit closer so you can get it a little bit closer look at these and Oops, sorry I just bumped the camera so these turned out really cute I really like how these look and, and something I did at the very end I uh, just a second please sorry about that ladies my little dots and Bella decided she needed to play with one of her squeaky toys as soon as I turned on the camera so sorry about that so what, something I added at the end um, when I completed the second jar that I didn't have on the first one are these really cute almost kind of a shimmery um, plastic little flowers from Mona Me Gabby. I really liked how these look against this um, little wooden snowflake. So I'm going to grab this and try to come a little bit closer. Give a little bit closer look here at all of the detail, the different elements and the layering. I am so, so obsessed with that Gilder's Paste Wax. I have it in a few different colors besides just the antique gold. And I did do it on the front and the back of each snowflake as I showed in the tutorial. Just because you you know you never know if things are going to get flipped around when they're being looked at or moved or whatever. And it's kind of like that completed look. And this is so shimmery and sparkly. And none of that um, just Tim Holtz Distress Tickles that I used on this, the, the glitter, excuse me, um, it doesn't come off on your hands or anything like, you know, when you look at different Christmas ornaments or things like that and the glitter comes off. It doesn't do that. And I love that. It's just so nice and thick on there it looks just like you know snow so it's pretty cool and on the back side with the elements of the different trims and burlap and lace and that jewelry wire there 
and then some different trims on the top. And then inside, I have one of those little um, battery operated little candles from the Dollar Tree. So these aren't meant to look like super, oh, I forgot to show you this side, where the little dangling sequins are, hang our little acrylic pieces right there. Very, very cute. So I didn't make these to look like exact twins or replicas of each one, because that'd be a little bit difficult to accomplish, especially when you have all the different layerings of, um, you know, the different layers and things like that. But they look like sisters, and that's kind of what I was going for. I just wanted them to kind of match and not look like they're identical. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. So I hope you ladies enjoyed this tutorial. I will have some photos either at the beginning or the end of the video and showing you each of the different parts of the project up close. And I'm going to swing my camera over here really quickly because I want you to take a look at my little partner today. She's sitting on the carpet looking at me like she's in trouble. Now if you see my laundry basket, don't don't judge me ladies. I'm doing my daughter's laundry. She got, just got back from her um, trip back home from Oregon so to visit her dad. So here she is. You say hi, Bella. Say hi. What are you doing? Want a treat? Want mommy get you a treat? You see her ears move. <laughs> She's so stinking. Oh, there goes the tail. She knows what that means. She's so stinking cute. Okay, ladies, I'm going to go ahead and go. I've got about four of the videos I need to finish showing you um, all the different projects that I've made for my Craftmas series. So I hope you ladies enjoyed this. And uh, please, as always, Leave me any comments or questions down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer any questions that you may have about the project that I did not go over thoroughly enough during the tutorial part of this video. I will see you ladies next time. Happy crafting, happy planning, and happy scrapping. Bye!